We now create some characters who carry another soul within them. Be it Yugi Muto, who carries the soul of the ancient Faroa Tem inside his Millennium Puzzle, Ryo Bakura, who has the Millennium Ring possessed by the soul of the ancient King of Thieves in combination with the Manifestation of Darkness Zork, or Judah Yuki, who became one with Yubel after fusing himself together with them. But there is one special case of the trade with Marek. Yami Marek is not just another pre-existing soul or person that got connected to Marek or anything like that. But to explain that, we have to take a look at Marek's past. The Ishtar clan are the descendants of the gravekeepers who protected the Millennium Rod and Necklace, as well as the location of the Pharaoh's memories. They lived separated from the rest of the world, deep underground. The eldest sons of the clan get a glyphs of memory carved into their bags, due to the sacred rituals they follow. Those who got their bags marked by these glyphs are forbidden to enter the outside world until the day when the Pharaoh returns. These sacred rituals are also called the Rite of the Tomb Guardians. Marik became the most recent victim of that ritual. His father performed the rite and carved Marik's back with a glowing hot knife just when he turned 10 years old. Marik got filled with so much hatred, sadness and pain that all he wanted was to die. Yami Marik was born at that exact moment. In order to survive and to keep going, he had to separate himself from all that hatred and pain, which he turned into another personality within himself. Yami Marik is just the separated hatred that manifested as an evil being. Yami Marik wasn't able to manifest out of Marik for a long time because Rishid, better known as Orion, carved hieroglyphics onto his face to prove his loyalty to Marik, which sealed the hatred of him back inside. As long as Rishid is by his side, Yami Marik won't emerge because it keeps Marik into a calm and positive mood. One year later, Marik wanted to take a look at the outside world and Rishid let him go while he himself tries to hide it from his father so he won't find out about that. But Marik's father already laid a trap that signalized him as soon as someone tries to go outside. Due to that, Richard wasn't able to hide it from him and got brutally punished by Marik's father who cut his back multiple times with glowing hot blades with the intent of killing him. That's when Marik came back from his outside journey with his sister Ishizu. He saw Richard falling unconscious which finally released his hatred as Yami Marik. He grabs the Millennium Rod and kills his father while skinning his by the glyphs of memory marked bag. He throws that skinned bag onto Richard's damaged bag, laughs at him and says that with that he can finally be part of the Ishtar family. But Rishid woke up unexpectedly and sealed the manifested pain of Marik back inside. Marik didn't remember anything Yami Marik did and it wasn't until Battle City that he learned about the truth about what happened. Even though Yami Marik was sealed inside him, he was able to influence Marik so much that he took away his guilt, so he can do his crimes unhinged. But why would he want to do this? Well, to make it easy, it's just because he wants to see the world burn. We learned this later on at Battle City. Rishid got beaten unconscious by the Egyptian god Ra, which let Yami Marik take over Marik's body again. The newly awakened Yami Marik was dueling Mai and tried to end her life at the end of the duel. Before that happened, Yugi asks Marik what his goals are. He answers by saying that he has no needs, but if he has to give out an answer, it would be that he wants to destroy everything, all light, all order and all life besides his own. To quote him, destruction is my only pleasure, destruction gives birth to my world, the dark world. But what exactly drives him to destroy everything? Where does it come from? It is for the sole reason how and why he was given birth to. He is the manifestation of high level anger and hatred. And I guess a lot of people can relate to the effect that hatred and rage can lead to destruction of other things or even their own body. The feeling when you ever hated someone so much that you were thinking of hitting the person or when you ever were so enraged that you hit yourself or threw anything around or something like that. Yami Marik is exactly that feeling personified. That reflects his enjoyment of destroying other people and the satisfaction of the pain he receives. But he also wants to make sure to stay alive. That possibly comes from the fact that Marik's will to survive was at the end what gave birth to Yami Marik. This is why he was so afraid of losing against Jonuchi or Marik at the final battle against Yugi. That was also the point where his life ended. He was facing Yugi in the final battle of the tournament and he made it the ultimate shadow game where your other personality will die when the life points are reaching zero. 
Marik and Yugi were able to overcome Yami Marik and make him switch places with his original self. With Yami Marik now being the sacrifice soul when Marik's life points reached zero, Marik made his move and gave up to finally completely remove his darker side from this world. Now we went through the birth, life and death of Yami Marik, but there is still one plot point about him that is pretty confusing. It is about the past thousand years. He talks about the past 1000 years on multiple occasions, saying that he waited for 1000 years to fight the pharaoh or that Kaiba's memories are reaching back to 1000 years ago. My first thoughts about that were that the Ishtar family started guarding the millennium items 1000 years ago since they were just the descendants of the gravekeepers, which says that they were not guarding it from the start. But that would not explain what he said to Kaiba and to be honest I can't tell what it could mean. Is it just a misconception of Marik that it was 1000 years ago? Didn't he know it better? Because Artem's time with Pre Seto was 3000 years ago. Was it a planned out plot that did not get continued on? As I said, I can't tell. But that's where you can help me out. Tell me in the comments below what you think about that topic. And don't forget to leave a like and to subscribe this channel if you enjoy watching Yu-Gi-Oh content. I hope I was able to explain Yami Marik understandably enough to you. Thank you so much for watching and have a great time. See you soon. Bye.